I know I'm skipping around, but we gotta move on. I refuse to split up another review like this. So you see, it was Crad who took the sack from the sleigh that awful night. Crad! Of course! I should have known. Why would anyone do such an awful thing? Well, shit, if you know who, who took the damn thing, why don't you just go get off your big fat red ass, break his door down, and take the bag back. Problem solved. Why don't you just take it back from him? I wish it was that easy. So, you basically just don't feel like it then. No wonder you're so lazy you only work once a year. At least Queen Rose just pretended to have a reason. Okay, I am way too self-referencing here. Let's dial that back a bit. But Crad lives deep in the earth with the cells. Huh? Hmm? What are cells? The cells were naughty children who only thought of themselves. Crad recruited them and turned them into evil drones to mine the coal. Believe me when I tell you that Crad is one crafty fellow. Wait, what? Movie, when were you going to bring this up? This is like a speculative fiction gold mine. And you just ran it off like it's just a thing? Come on, I want to know, movie. Is this like a Pleasure Island thing? Does he lure the children in and transform them into his obedient slaves? Or does he just flat out kidnap them? How long has he been doing this? Have you just let him? Since you apparently know about this. You could make an entire movie about this alone. Plus, I kind of feel like forcing children into slavery is far more grounds for termination than other than I just stop punishing naughty children. Anyway, Santa says he's too old. Well, to continue with the surge. Is he supposed to be immortal or something? Or is this one of those specials where he's kept alive by Christmas spirit or something? You'll never get your strength back if you don't eat. You should try it, Santa. It's delicious. <laughs> How can I possibly eat? Look at that precious little face looking up at me. You know, he's right. I'm pretty sure that even beats out oh, Christie's adorable face from Care Bears 2. And now you know how I picked out my new avatar for this month. Anyway, they also answer the other blaring plot hole about why not just make a new sack. Trust me, you're gonna love this. Wait a minute! If you can make all those toys, why don't you just make another sack? Because it's not just a sack. It's the sack. See what it says there? And Mary brought forth her firstborn son, Jesus, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger. Precisely the reason why we can't just make another sack. I don't understand. You see, Sofiana, Santa's sack is made from the swaddling clothes that we use to wrap the baby Jesus in the manger. Each Christmas Eve, Santa delivered gifts from the magical sack to remind the children of that great miracle. The birth of the newborn king. Wow, guys. I don't think I know where to start with this one. Honestly, though, I think this might have been what kept this off everyone's radar for so long. Please don't bring God into this. I think this movie has more than enough plot holes and issues without bringing Christian iconography into the mix. Let's go! Oh, finally. Come on, we only have five days to find the sack. Exactly, only five days to find... Wait, hold on, wait a second. Back the sleigh up. We are not going anywhere but straight back to St. Clair's Orphanage. Oh no, I can't go back there. Not now, not knowing how wonderful things will be once we find Santa's sack. You know what, that's actually pretty good. Sofiana is basically Robin Starling if she was in her own movie. Okay, she's not particularly flawed or anything, but she's the first one to actually be proactive in this movie, and she actually wants to move the plot forward. Anyway, they recruit a reindeer named Dart. Three guesses what his character arc will be. It was me, down here. I'm Dart, Grantor's grandson. You will help us find Santa's sack? I sure will. We have to find it, because one day I'm going to help pull Santa's sleigh. You? <laughs> pull Santa's sleigh? <laughs> Funny, you pull Santa's You slay me. <laughs> Get it? Slay me. <laughs> He's going to pull the little guy. Oh, that's the funniest thing ever. <laughs> that isn't funny. You shouldn't make fun of someone else's dreams. Dude, you don't have to be a dick about it. Fun fact, that's the same reaction I got when I wanted to become a YouTube partner. 
Ultimately, Paul Rocco begrudgingly goes along with them, because, you know, it's either her go on an epic quest, or sit around when to binge watch reruns of Two Broke Girls with Santa. Not much of a choice there. And they travel up the mountain. Must. Rest. <coughs> Wait, here's an idea. Dart, why don't you just fly us to the top of the mountain? Uh, well, I haven't exactly learned how to do that yet. You don't know how to fly? I have the leaping part down pat. I just can't soar. What do you mean? You come from a bloodline of flying reindeer. You can fly. You must fly. You will fly. See that? Even Sofiana agrees with me. Gee, you really think I can do it? I know you can. Me too. It's unanimous. Now fly us up to the top of that mountain. OK. You know, if he couldn't fly on his own, I'm not sure what weighing him down would have accomplished anyway. That's okay, Dart. Look at the bright side. What bright side? At least we have the sun to keep us warm. You had to say it out loud. All right, that was also kind of funny. We then cut to... Damn it. We were doing fine without these songs, and now we get one of the worst. Look, I'll say that Ed Asner is a very talented actor, both on screen and voice acting, but I'm sorry, the man can't sing. He just can't. This is his first song. His actual villain song is somehow even worse. But this is one of the worst possible songs. Not the song itself, but its placement. The type of song that doesn't tell us anything, character-related or otherwise, doesn't advance the story or move things along, it's just there so that we can break 70 minutes. Barely. Also, has Krat just been doing this for 30 years? What does this victory dance accomplish other than rubbing it in Santa's face when Santa doesn't even know about this? I imagine it'd be pretty hard to get any work done if my boss kept breaking out with a song about how awesome he was every few hours. Why not just make Krampus the villain here? Okay, I can think of a few reasons why that Krampus wouldn't be the villain in this movie, but come on! That would be so badass! Now, back to the plot already in progress. They find themselves at the top of the mountain, but have no way of knowing where the secret entrance to Krad's lair is. Until... Huh. I hope that's a lunar eclipse. You should be ashamed of yourself, scaring helpless little... What's your name, honey? S sophiana Sophiana. Now say you're sorry. You're sorry. No, I'm sorry. Apology accepted. Oh, never mind. This is Buster the Fox and Charlie the Polar Bear, voiced by Norm MacDonald and Brad Garrett, respectively. If you don't know who Brad Garrett is, he's the guy who usually he takes up the roles that Patrick Warburton said no to. Yes, thank you. I'm Buster, and this is Charlie. You've got to forgive us, we don't get many visitors up here. Nope, sure don't. Not many. Well, not any, really. Well, there was that penguin, but he got separated from his colony, so he wasn't really a visitor, more like a disoriented day-tripper. Oh, right enough. She gets the point. 
I think these two might be my favorite characters in the movie, especially Buster. He kind of reminds me of Eddie from Ed, Ed, and Eddie, and anything that brings me back to one of my favorite childhood cartoons instantly gets a free pass in my book. Yes. So, what brings you here? We're looking for Crad. Crad? Crad. Uh, I know the atmosphere is thin here, but really nobody, nobody looks for Crad. He has something we want. Yes. And what would that be? A slow and painful death, perhaps? Santa's sack. And does he also have the Easter Bunny's basket? <laughs> I seriously love every scene these two are in. You can probably imagine that Buster has the jerk ass with a heart of gold written all over him from frame one, but Norm MacDonald still gives him a few funny lines every now and then. Listen, Buster. Oh, gee, I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> Unless you know where the secret entrance is. Secret I... entrance? Well, well, of course I, I know where the secret entrance is. You do? Will you show us? Well, if I showed you, it wouldn't be much of a secret. Now would it? Please, you just have to help us find Santa's sack. And what's in it for me? Knowing that you brought joy to the entire world, silly. Oh, yes, of course, joy. I'm a big fan of joy. But uh, joy don't pay the rent, sister. You gotta do a little better than that. I want to hate you so much more than I do, but you're just too damn fun. Anyway, Sofiana offers her locket in exchange for the information. No bonus points for guessing she gets it back anyway by the end of the movie. Who tries to trick them into a fake secret entrance? Well, here we are. Now, all of you just close your eyes. Why do we have to close our eyes? Because, my little reindeer friend, no one else can know the secret to the secret of finding the secret entrance. Now, close your eyes. Not you, you oversized cotton ball. Okay, on the count of three, open your eye. One, two, three. What I do? However, the caterpillar finds it by total accident. They wake up in... the Cave of Wonders? Are those diamonds? Rubies! Sapphires! I must already be dead, because I think I'm in heaven. To all who enter, take heed, especially those most in need. Although your wealth may be improved, for every gemstone from here removed. A terrible fate you will endure. You won't be happy, and that's for real. Now that does it rhyme. See? You thought I was kidding. Now we get to the worst song in the movie. And it's unfortunately Buster's song. Keep going. Keep going. We've arrived. But we have to find the sack. Right, the sack. Good idea. We could use it to carry all these gems. Santa would never allow that. Why don't you run along and play some reindeer games, huh? Darts right! The sack is only to be used for the official business of delivering toys to all the good girls and boys around the world! Lighten up, shortbread. What happens in Middle Earth stays in Middle Earth. Diamonds and gems galore! Who could ask for more? Toys are for youngsters, those bratty little monsters. These are things we could use. Ah, living like princes, our eyes should convince us that this is what we should do. I say song, but that's pretty loose of a definition. It's more like he's just talking over the music. This is what I mean when I say the songs are too slow. The music moves at the pace of a fruitcake melting, the lyrics don't lead to anything, and the rhymes are either forced or non-existent. And the song feels 20 times longer than it is. This is basically the same song McNasty had in Pound Puppies, but somehow worse. At least his VA, he could actually sing. Not in the movie, certainly, but you know what I mean. Eventually, they continue forth. The bridge! It's falling apart! 
That can't be good. Wait a minute. For every gemstone from here removed, a terrible fate you will endure. Buster! What? Do you actually think I'd put innocent lives in danger over a couple of stupid rocks? Yes! yes. Oh. Hurry! We have to put all the gems back! The bridge falls into the lava, which leads to, you guessed it, Uh-oh. Don't tell me. We're about to go over a huge waterfall. Yep. Sharp rocks at the bottom? Most likely. Bring it on. Three, two, one. You did it! Tart, you're flying! I knew you could do it! And now this movie just got 20%... Never mind. They finally arrive at Krad's lair, which looks pretty damn awesome. Wow, would you look at the size of this place? The utility bills must be through the roof. We've got to be close to the sack now. I bet it's up there. Come on, let's go. <laughs> no way. I'm staying right here. I said I'd show you the secret entrance, and I did. Now, unless you've got some other fancy heirloom to hawk, I'm staying put. Let him stay. He only gets us into trouble anyway. He's right. I'm troubled water, see? Now be a bridge and ease my mind. Yeah, yeah, we all know you're gonna have a heel turn. Then they finally reach Santa's magical bag. It wasn't long before they found what they'd journeyed so far to reclaim. There it is! Wait, something's wrong. This is too easy. Too easy? Too easy? Do you know what we've been through to get here? Don't be so paranoid. Unguarded. All I have to do is... Wait. It's too easy. There must be some kind of... Security? This is our burglar alarm? A bucket of water? <laughs> that was too easy. Hey, this isn't water. This is... Gas. <laughs> Okay, that doesn't happen, but I just had that one last Spongebob clip for the end of the year. They quickly realize, no shit, the bag is actually booby-trapped and Kred's henchmen are closing in fast. Uh, don't worry, I'll get us out! <laughs> We're doomed! Hold on, I have an idea. Must be a false alarm. Yeah, false alarm. Oh, we better disarm the system. Disarm the system! I'll notify Crad. No, I'll notify Crad. No, I will. No, I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. I Sophiana remembered everything Paul Rocco had told her about the magical sack and knew if it could hold all the toys for the world's girls and boys, it could easily hold all of them. Okay, that was actually pretty clever. Good job, movie. You get a cookie. Plus, I'm glad this movie went this long without making the obvious Santa sack jokes that I've been making. I think somebody needs to do a little laundry around here. That's one dirty sack. Oh, come on! You weren't even trying that time! Okay! You have to know what you're talking about! Nobody's that naive! You're trying to play all innocent when you know that everyone's gonna be snickering at your commercial and thus remembering your product better. I mean, I might believe that wasn't intentional if they don't drop any more innuendos. The Wonder Boner. My wife would like that. You know! You totally know what you're talking about and you should be ashamed of yourself! Dirt my pointy ear. <coughs> it's not dirt, it's coal. Look, Crab's using the sack to store all of the coal from the mines. Why? Just one big fuck you to Santa that he doesn't even know about? 
Or is it just out of spite? Anyway, Buster shows up and tries to lead them out, but it turns out to be another trap, this time bribed by Crad. Oh, I love a good traitor. 25 pieces of gold for your spineless act of duplicity. Buster, how, how could you? Sorry, kid. But, you know, somebody has to look out for number one. Did you know about this? Know about what? Your buddy is a mole. What? All these years he said he was a fox. <laughs> Hurt by Buster's betrayal, they're forced to hand over the sack, and we get the second Ad Asner song in the movie, and this is the absolute worst one yet. Why would you do such a terrible thing like steal Santa's sack? Why do zebras have stripes? Why do the Scottish play bagpipes? Some things just are. Me? I'm evil. Always have been, always will be. I'm evil. That's what I am. There's no use denying I'm guilty as sin. So evil. How can you stand to look into my eyes? I'm such a cruel man. Okay, this is just inexcusable. The villain song is supposed to be the best song in almost any production. Think back to all the best villain songs. Big and Loud from Cats Don't Dance, Friends on the Other Side from Princess and the Frog, In the Dark of the Night from Anastasia, hell, even You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch. These are songs that have passion and effort behind them. The villain song can be boastful, foreboding, big and extravagant, short and broody, but the one thing it can't be is boring. More than that, this is the worst kind of villain song. It doesn't tell us anything about the character like Hellfire. It doesn't give us their plans like in the dark of the night. It doesn't even give us their inner thoughts and emotions like snuff out the light. It's just it's the look how mean and evil I am villain song and that's the worst kind. He broke off the tip of Cupid's bow and ate the mistletoe. He's so cruel. He traded his mom for this old mule. I'm evil. I am the one, the cruel mean old geezer who trips kids for fun. You know your musical number sucks when even the characters are waiting for it to be over already. Where was this reaction when I was reviewing Pound Puppies? Or My Little Pony? or Care Bears. After three minutes letting the audience know that it's okay to go get some popcorn and use the bathroom, we see that the gang has been captured by Crad. All hope is lost, you know the drill. Cue jerk ass redemption moment. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut straight to the part where they get broken out by Buster and spare you an extra five minutes. Buster! You have some nerve showing up here. Shh! You wake up the guards. I knew you wouldn't leave us down here. Here, you better hold on to this. How did you get the sack without setting off the alarm? A precisely timed swap of Santa's sack with a bag of Crad's gold prevented tripping the alarm. Okay, movie, fine. I'm willing to let this slide just once because it's a Christmas special. Don't take that for granted now. They try to escape again and immediately get caught. Thank you, movie. I really needed a reminder at how much I suck at playing Dishonored. We're now past the 60 minute mark, so why don't we just wrap this up? Crad ends them cornered, but Sofiana manages to pull out the win. Wait, 
aren't the selves actually children turned into monsters? So, basically, the protagonist just murdered someone and his army of child slaves. Merry Christmas, everyone! Fa la 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 The time had come for Sophiana to bid a sad farewell to Buster and Charlie. There you go. I, I never really liked the color red anyway. Thank you. I'll never ever forget either of you. Oh, we'll never ever forget you either. Who was that? Well, Sophiana gives her locket back and bids Buster and Charlie farewell. Christmas returns with the sack, and Santa gives Sophiana a wish for anything she's ever wanted and for saving Christmas. I don't believe it. You brought the sack back to me. Now, what can I do for you? For me? Yes, of course. Your courage and unselflessness will be generously rewarded this Christmas. Just whisper what you want in old St. Nick's ear. Anything? Anything. Wait a minute, did you say anything? Anything. Anything. Yes, anything. <laughs> anything. 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 I'll get you, and I'll look like a bloody accident. Of all the things Sophiana could ask for, there is only one thing she wanted more than anything else in the whole world. Well, you see, honey, sometimes when people say anything, they don't really mean anything. Gross! She'd never do that, Toshi. Besides, where are we gonna get a dozen ping pong balls? Ha! Already used my get hit on a joke free card, so I was saving it for something even better than that. Christmas is here again, yes sirree. Bringing good cheer again to you and me. Soon we'll see Santa Claus in his sleigh. Riding the Milky Way. Admittedly, though, the title song, Christmas is Here Again, is actually pretty decent. The director, Robert Zappia, wrote the songs for this movie, and I'll admit that not all of them are bad, but just have issues. It would have been so much easier to hire an actual songwriter for this, if nothing else, but to at least touch up some of the score here and there. Considering the movie was made for just under a million dollars, which is practically pocket change even by direct-to-video standards, the film has been fairly impressive. Back at the orphanage, though, what? Mr. Caterpillar is evolving! shade of violet I've ever seen. That can be your new name, Violet. Mm -hmm. Come back and visit. That's not the only big thing that changes here, though, as Sophiana gets a visitor. Sophiana? It seems someone has come to see you. Me? What for? It's adoption day. Or have you forgotten? Well, don't just sit there tongue-tied. Put on your best face, child, and come meet them. That's right. The couple who had come to adopt Sofiana were none other than Mr. and Mrs. Claus themselves. And it seems Santa was able to make her Christmas wish to be part of a family come true after all. Not so fast. Here, child. Seeing that Sofiana was leaving the orphanage for good, Miss Dowdy decided to give Sofiana her Christmas present early. It was a beautiful, hand-carved wood cane. And although she wouldn't dare admit it, Miss Dowdy was quite sad to see Sophiana go. Well, that's about it for the movie. 
Mr. and Mrs. Claus adopt Sophiana. Miss Dowdy is nice now because... Happy ending. And we end on a photo montage of Sophiana's happy new life. So divine, for when you love me, the world is mine, the world is mine, the world is mine. The world is mine. The world is mine. You got me, honey, and you got me good. You got me good. A present you got for me? me? This movie just doesn't suck. I'm sorry, but I can't hate this movie. It's like a Christmas special quilt. It's made with scraps and bits from all the other Christmas specials, and it's kind of slipshot and patchy in places. But it's made with warmth and love to create something unique and beautiful. The characters are nice, the animation is pretty and very unique, and the special carries a sort of familiarity to it. It's very rare that a Christmas special feels so familiar yet so unique at the same time. And despite its faults like the plot holes, a few dud musical numbers, the slow pacing, the shaky start, everyone else still turns in a really good performance. Despite my snark, I really enjoy this movie, and I encourage you to see it with your friends and family this holiday season. It's starting to grow a small cult following, but I think it really deserves- wait a second. This was made by a religious company. Oh, well in that case it sucks. Wow. This was kind of a long year for me as a reviewer. Still, I had a lot of fun putting these reviews together and hopefully making you people at home laugh. Even if I'm not that funny. So, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy New Year, and everything else in between I missed. As always, I'm the all-consuming critic. Trust me, I'm a professional.